my name is Omotolani Tayo Oshikoya. I am the Chief Operating Officer at CISD Digital and also a food blogger, a recipe developer at Diary of a Kitchen Lover. And here are my top five tips on building a successful side hustle. I have a nine to five job, yes, an advertising practitioner. I work with um, a digital advertising company, but my side also over the years has been from me being a food blogger to being um, a fashion a fashion entrepreneur to selling hair to doing just so many things that I've always loved to do. I started food blogging two years ago and it started as a joke, I'd say that, because um, there was a day I, I, I made um, Chinese fried rice and I posted it on my personal page on Instagram and I got a lot of people asking me for the recipes and the good thing about me is that I always create my recipes from the scratch that's why I call myself also a recipe developer so I just thought about it that okay why not create a page where people come to learn recipes and to um, watch videos and so I just started it I just put I just created that page um, one day and all of a sudden I got 50 followers that day I, I just I just I just saw it as something that okay Tolani this is something you are going to do then all of a sudden after um, two years now I have over a hundred thousand followers I have worked with so many brands and I, I, I decided to make it a side also when I had 20,000 followers and a brand reached out to me to send my gift card I was like whoa <laughs> food blogging is something I've always loved to do and it was born out of passion and luckily for me thankfully my passion is paying me now and it has never for once affected my day's job i've always put my 100 percent um what i do normally is spend the whole of my day like my nine to five focusing and being dedicated to my um nine to five job and every other time after that time i focus on my side also so i'm here to give you five tips on how to run a successful side also without it affecting your nine to five job my first tip will be for you to check your employment course to be sure you are allowed to run a side hustle. I'll give an example. Um, far back in 2012, when I was working at the airport, um, I'm someone that has always loved to sell hair. I, I was selling hair back in university, so I felt I could continue since I just finished NYC and I just got employed at the airport. And I, fortunately for me, I checked our employment handbook and it was boldly written there. You are not allowed to do any other business besides the airport business. It was really, really sad for me and I could not wait to leave. <laughs> I could not wait to leave the job because um, I'd always love to do something else when I get home. Like my idle time was always something that I always loved to um, use to do something productive. So the fact that I could not run any business outside my full employment made me sad and eventually i had to leave after like a few months after to get a job where i could run a side hustle so if your employment does not allow you to or if your current employer does not allow you to run a side hustle you might have to um maybe wait a little bit to get a new um, employment or if it allows you to run a side hustle then you are good to go my second tip for you is that you have to um, identify a business or a service you are passionate about. Um, when you are passionate about something, you would never see it as a job. Um, if you are passionate about any business or anything, late nights, working late nights, working in the wee hours would never, will never be an issue for you. Um, I'll use myself as an example. When I started food blogging, uh, my husband called me an obsessed human being because he will be sleeping in the midnight and I'm filming. <laughs> and he wakes up in the morning and he sees food all lined up and everything. He's like, when did you make this food? I never see it as work and it still happens up until now. And because of the fact that, you know, I'm passionate about, I'm passionate about food blogging, I've been able to remain consistent over time. Passion makes you do the unspeakable, to be honest. Last year, I had a major setback with my food blogging career. Um, I'd already... I was about to start an online class. I already had over 200 students waiting for me to start the class. And I was supposed to film 40 recipes to um, teach the online course. And unfortunately for me, I lost all the files on my phone. I lost everything, all the videos. And it was like two weeks to the class. If TS could bring back the video, 
I could, <laughs> it could have, it, it could have, you know, appeared back on my phone. There was nothing I could not do. I, there was nothing I did not do to bring back the videos. I checked. I went to, I went to the engineers to see if I could get it back. It wasn't, it wasn't just coming through. And so I took it upon myself to film all 40 recipes all over again within two weeks. <laughs> You, you, I don't know if you understand what it means to film a video. It takes you to go to the market to shop for ingredients. I'm talking of continental dishes, amala, different things. After shopping for ingredients, you now have to meal prep. You now have to cook the main food while filming. Like filming takes at least four hours to um, complete then and I moved to editing and I was supposed to do it for 40 recipes. It was really, really tough for me, but because of the passion and the drive I had for the side hustle, I, my, my, I mean, I'd already collected money from this student and I wasn't going to disappoint them. I was not going to disappoint them. So what I did was once I closed, I made sure I closed by five on the dots. I leave the, I leave the office by five on the dots and I run home all through once i get to the house all through the night i film all i film all the recipes and ah uh, thankfully i was able to film all 40 recipes before the class started that was because um if i didn't have passion for it i'd have seen it as a job like oh, oh i don't want to do it and all of that so with passion and um, drive your side hustle can actually blow up. yeah my third tip for you is for you to never follow the crowd you need to identify that one thing that stands you out. I'll give an example. Maybe you want to sell home appliances or kitchen appliances and you know they're already, there are people already selling these things and there's people already cashing out of these things. And um, what, makes, what will make you stand out and what will make people want to patronize you? Um, one tip I'll give you under this tip is for you to, um, while other people are just taking pictures and posting it online of these home appliances, why not take it upon yourself to maybe make a video video of how to use this product for example you want to sell a blender and um, you're just posting a picture people know it's a blender already how what makes your blender special from um seller hey you understand um you can just make a video of how to use it and maybe if your blender is very good and it crushes ice immediately and all of that you can make a video of how this blender works but with these people will see that okay your blender is actually different and this person actually puts a hundred percent in marketing a, a product and all of that and people will definitely patronize you i would also use my food blogging as an example um when i started the food blogging i i, I was really looking for something that makes me stand out that will make people want to follow my page so i looked i browsed through other food blogging food bloggers pages and all of that and i found one thing my photography and my videography i had to improve my skills like literally i check google every day on how to take good pictures on how to do good food plating and um i decided to buy apps i decided to buy um props a lot of props like I, I shop for props almost every other week to make sure that my picture and my video is not the same as another food blogger and um, one thing that i've always get gotten commendations about is my pictures my my videos are interesting to watch and it got to a point people were even asking me what do you use to edit what do you use to film i identified a business on that that too so i did a pre-recorded one hour video showing people how to make um good videos and how to take good pictures and i sold it for five thousand naira. In, in fact i am still selling it for five thousand naira. so if anybody approaches me i'm like oh so I mean, your video is so good your camera what camera do you use and all of that i just look at them i'm like have a pre-recorded video one hour just sit down and watch it you know everything that i use but it's just five thousand naira. so if you identify that thing that makes you strong and stands you out you will definitely excel in your side hustle the fourth tip I would like to share with you is for you to dream big and focus small. Dream big and start small. Remember that whatever side also you want to venture into, there are already some people doing it full time and you cannot be comparing yourself with those people because for them to have gotten to that level, they, they, there must have been a lot of sacrifices, a lot of consistency, a lot of failure. Um, they probably went through hell to get to that point. And you are just starting. You can't compare yourself to those people. Instead of comparing yourself, why don't you just take them as a secret mentor if they are not even approachable and look at what they are doing. And um, in future, see yourself as somebody that wants to achieve what they are achieving in that space. 
for example, when I started Diary of a Kitchen Lover, I started with zero followers. <laughs> and I would look at the big shots in the industry and I would be like, wow, I want to be like these people sometime. I want to, I want to, I want to achieve what they've already achieved, you know. But um, I knew what I needed to do to remain or to be at that level. So I started. I was consistent like my consistency level is like 100 percent and there was a time when i hit 500 followers and um, some people were asking who their food blogger mentor is and everything so they mentioned my diary they, they mentioned diary of the kitchen lover with uh, my mentor's handle and it was so it was so i was so excited to the point that she even messaged me and told me i was doing a good job and fast forward to two years later, whenever they want to send us a brief and or they want to give us a gig and everything, my name is always the first. Then she, if you see her there, or her is always the first, and I see her, uh, my name there. Like, it was something I dreamt about, and I knew I needed to do something about it to be at, at, at that level. And it took me um, consistency. I was, I was consistent, and it took me a lot of time to improve myself, a lot of... Um, self thoughts I, I always like to introduce myself as a self thought food blogger <laughs> because I never for once went to any school or I never for once, I took it upon myself to learn everything that they were doing already and I never saw them as a competition, I instead saw them as people that I would like to um, be like in future. You have to actually start small for you to run a successful side hustle. The fifth tip I would like to share with you is to never see disappointment or failure as a setback. Um, the process of starting a side hustle is always a very exciting process where um, you are excited about starting a new business and you're already thinking big, I'm going to get a lot of customers, this is my target for this year. But the real deal is when you actually start a business. You might start, you might start slow, you might not even get customers, you might not get subscribers to, to your services, you might not even get any sales or you might even lose properties, lose um, the goods you are selling. I'd use my dad as an example this time around. I grew up in a family where my parents were hustlers. My daddy, I used to call my daddy a side hustle king because he had a full-time job, he still does. And growing up, I can count up to 15 side hustles that he had. So there was a particular one that really, really struck the family where um, he, he's an engineer, he builds, um, build, he has building um, um, company where he builds um, building materials and all of that. So he had just established that particular place and he was already running the business, everything was going fine. All of a sudden, the government came and said they were going to demolish the place. Ooh, after spending so much money, after, you know, putting in so much resources, time, energy, you know, the government came and they demolished the place. It was really, really sad because we, the children, could see that, you know, it was, it was, it was bitter that period, but he never let it affect him. I saw, I saw a father where he picked himself immediately and he moved on to the next business. He moved on, he, he built a car wash. In fact, three businesses in one, in one location, he moved on. Um, he didn't mind losing that money or anything. He moved on. Even if it took him to borrow money to start a new business, he created a car wash, a um, public toilet, I think a restaurant, all in one place immediately. And even we, the children, were even feeling sad for him at one point that, ah, um, that he has lost this business and everything all of a sudden we just seem happy all of a sudden and everybody is fine again you know he never allowed it to affect his mood in the house he never allowed it to kill his um, business drive or his side hustle drive whenever you feel disappointed and you feel like your side hustle is not making you happy or you are not doing good at it never see it as a, a setback or never see it as a point where you have to back down um i'd rather you see it as something that's um, a drive and something that will make you forge better and be a better person seek for more knowledge and um, you will be fine if you follow all these tips i have shared i'm going to go over the tips again i shared the first one is for you to make sure that you don't have an employment clause that hinders you from running a side hustle that's very 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 important so you don't get fired while starting the side hustle the second one i shared is make sure that whatever side hustle you want to venture into you have passion and you are pretty confident that you can be consistent at it for you to identify that skill that feature that stands you out of every other competitors that you already have in that side hustle space then the fourth one i said is for you to dream big and start small that is also super important if you dream big and you start small you definitely get there someday with consistency then the last tip i shared is to never see disappointment or failure as a setback 
and if you follow these tips um keenly follow these tips one by one i'm sure you'll be a happier person of course you'll be making extra bucks with your full-time job salary a side also will help you grumble less about your finances so if you are thinking of starting a side hustle you better start today i wish you all the best